Chris, my condolences to you, although what a hell of a run for somebody who is a seventh-round oh, choice as a quarterback Absolutely. and uh, and Absolutely. becoming the go-to guy and one of the best performances uh, we've seen from by a wideout in a postseason career by anybody in Julian Edelman, one of our favorites to be on this show. He's a media darling for many different reasons, um, and, um, and he hung him up yesterday as he failed a physical – Patriots terminated his contract, and that was all in accordance of him saying that he is done, that his body can no longer withstand the rigors of an NFL campaign. And so there's two ways to look at it. One, which is the rational, normal, humane, um, empathetic, sympathetic, and also... um, the right way to look at it, quite honestly, which is what a career. Unbelievable. And we will discuss that. Yeah, what a career. And, of course, the uh, other way to look at it is can't wait to see what he's going to look like with the Buccaneers. That'll be fantastic. Stop it. Stop. The num- even, my, even, <laughs> even, even, my, even Zan, my 12-year-old, was saying, does that mean he's going to play with Tampa? Is that what he's going to go with Gronk? He literally said, as <laughs> as I turned off the light, and I'm like, "Can you? We're going to sleep now." Was is everybody from New England going to wind up playing for Brady? Is what he said to me as he was going to sleep. <laughs> I don't think so, I don't think Edelman would have done that even if he was healthy. Well, he and Brady, as we all know, are linked forever, and they are tight. They are BFFs, and Tom Brady said on Twitter, on the biggest stage, and in the biggest moments, you always came through. You never lost that chip on your shoulder, and you never let anyone define you as a person or player. I'm proud of you, Jules. Love you at Edelman 11. Bill Belichick's statement that he released through the Patriots today was was quite something. It was filled with the highest of praise, and you could see much love and respect. Let's not forget again, Julian Edelman, Seventh round choice out of Kent State at quarterback, becoming one of the greatest postseason wide receivers in the history of the NFL. And I keep saying postseason because that's where his numbers lie. That's where the conversation lies as to whether he is an all time great or not. His regular season numbers, when you compare them with, uh, when you compare them with wide receivers who are still waiting to get in the Hall of Fame, like right. Right. Uh, fellow Super Bowl MVP Heinz Ward, like Torrey Holt. You cannot, you cannot compare the numbers. They are not comparable. Right. Right. Uh, that is not to say that he wasn't a clutch performer in some clutch regular season games and was a must, must cover, must have, must mark, must circle for the defense against New England and Tom Brady and Julian Edelman when he was out there in December games, November games against the Colts, against the Steelers. We could go on and on and on. What he did, essentially, let's not forget when he came in, that's when Wes Welker was Brady's guy. That's when Wes Welker was Brady's guy in the slot. That's when Wes Welker, as we know, moved on. Who was going to be Brady's next guy? It was Julian Edelman. And when we look at Brady's second half of his Patriots career, his first half of his Patriots career had Welker, had the, what, Pattons and yeah, Deion Patton Branches. And, and, and right. Ben Coates. Right. And, yeah. The second half of Brady's Patriots career is Gronk and Edelman and Tom. And that's, that's the offense. I mean, there are obviously other pieces to it. James yeah. White is somebody who James scored White. the game-winning touchdown in an overtime, only overtime uh, win in the history of yeah. a Super Bowl. So, you know, Edelman is, without question, one of the best receivers in postseason history and one of the best players that Tom Brady's ever played with and took Brady to spots that Brady needed him to take him to. The Boston knee party catch, if you will. Oh, amazing. Which is that juggling grab where the ball was bouncing off of his knee (laughs) and and just damn near off the ground and that comeback against the Atlanta Falcons is one of the greatest catches in the history of the Super Bowl. So I'm not going to get into the is he a Hall of Famer chat. And I thought that was so, I mean, I I knew it was coming, but it was so unfair yesterday. Like, 
30 minutes after this guy posts this amazing video. Correct. All of Twitter was just, Wes Welker was trending yesterday. Calvin Johnson, it's just like, let the guy have a day. Well, Let him enjoy the moment. Or let me put it this way. The fact that we're having the conversation, is he a Hall of Famer or not, for someone who was a seventh round choice out of Kent State at quarterback okay. and made himself into who he became and made, I guess. yes, I mean, yes a, he had a goat at quarterback. It, the but. fact that we're even talking about that is reason enough to hoist one in the direction of, of Julian Edelman. That's true. I guess I, I don't want to spend any time. Is he a Hall of Famer or is he not? Because there are ways to poke holes into the fact that he's oh, for sure. not going to Canton, Ohio, yeah, or course. shouldn't, at least until other people get in. So I'm not going to go in that direction. Just the mere fact that he made himself into what he became. And I, I, I understand he had the goat throwing to him. But the goat throws to people that he knows will be there. Yep. There's a dependability factor that comes to being thrown to by the goat. There's also a certain intensity that the goat puts out that few others can match or are willing to match or take that as a cue to say, I can surpass it even. The chip on the shoulder. And then just a great dude, man. Great dude. He really is a great, great human being. I'll, I'll just tell this story as well. Great personality. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell this story as well. You know, my, my, my youngest son, Cooper, 11 uh, was his favorite number because of Edelman. He wore, as Julian would call it, the sticks. Put the, and, and I told Julian Edelman that once, that my son loves wearing number 11 for soccer, for everything. That's his first choice for a number because of Julian Edelman. And he offered to FaceTime him. Well, you know, that nice. sort of stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's awesome. Have I never told you this story? I don't think I, so. He to offered to FaceTime him and taught him how to put his hand in a diamond shape in order to catch the ball. Don't let it get in your chest. Catch it out here. Put the diamond shape up there. And I saw him warming up for the Super Bowl in Houston, the last one, yep. <laughs> against, you know, prior to that big game against the Atlanta Falcons, yeah. right? And his moment, right? That was his Super Bowl MVP, um, part of his Super Bowl MVP run that year. Not obviously that game, but right. he, he was warming up, making that diamond shape, and I... FaceTimed Cooper to show this is what Julian Edelman is yeah, doing. He does it. Right? And I didn't want to interrupt him, but he wound up as he's coming off. He asked how Cooper was doing. Yeah, it's awesome. For the Super Bowl. Like a good, solid human. And I say to him, on behalf of all of us here, now that he is done playing, I say to him, Let's all have a Shabbat dinner <laughs> and raise a glass of Manischewitz with maybe something else to one of the best receivers I've seen play who raises his game in one of the best games that we've been fortunate to see, the Super Bowl. And he walks off a multiple champion, multiple times, a Super Bowl MVP, a dynamite human with a great reputation in the game and I look forward to seeing what he does next hey you watched all the way to the end thanks for that watch more right here